rebounding in games two and three. Um, what slipped in that in that category tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was it was. Um, you know, I thought OG and Precious and, and those guys were really um, a factor. They were both, you know, very energetic, very athletic, um, getting their hands on, on some balls. Hart, you know, obviously got his got his share, but OG, or Precious came in there and you know, got four and probably got his hands on two or three more. Certainly, certainly became a big factor in the fourth. Uh, I, guess, I guess like whether was there a moment in, in the second half where you were thinking about maybe getting Joel a, a little rest? And, I mean, what kind of what's been playing on the second half? Right? Yeah, I mean, he was he was feeling good and wanted to go. So I think it's you know all these games are all must win and and um, we didn't have a very good stretch when he was out in the first half. So we were we were willing to continue on. This point, Nick, I think uh, both stretches this series were played Joel and Brunson sat. Tonight they played you guys to a standstill. I think they went actually won the minutes in game two. Guys, what do you, why do you think you weren't able to capitalize with Brunson on the bench? Um, well, we just, I don't, you know, we didn't shoot the ball very well tonight. Um, and I thought once we got a 10 point lead, I think we turned it over three of the next four possessions. We had really great rhythm going, and it's almost like we took ourselves out of rhythm with those turnovers. I mean, we were really rolling there. And then, then it got a little, little difficult to find rhythm. And then, listen, we executed a lot of stuff that we were re making the right reads on and didn't knock those, some of those shots down, missed a couple layups, you know. There was some, there was some clunky uh, possessions here or there, but you know that's playoffs. Every, you know both teams have those, but mostly you just needed to knock a few of those in and finish a little tougher at the rim. They put a no beyond Joel for a lot in the second half. How did you think that kind of messed with the offense at any point? Well, he did a good job. OG can can obviously guard him, right? And um, they were. I mean, it's it's that, and it's the scheme as well. Like when he got it, they were they were getting it out of his hands. And again, I think he made really great reads. I mean, you guys can see those plays just like I can in in your head right now, where we're swinging around. We got Kelly on a back cut for a layup. We got swing around threes. We got pass pass wide corner threes. Like making the right reads, you gotta we gotta step in and make them. Joel had only a point and a rebound in the fourth. What did you make of the way? team played in that quarter and he played in that quarter? Well, we obviously didn't score enough, right? Um, but we, we again, it's not like they were sending multiple people at him. And you got you to gotta play, make the right play. And I think he did. Same, same answer three times in a row. Yeah, we got to play better. Right, I think we got to play better. I mean, it was a hell of a game. Again, it could have went either way. We, we, we were up 10 twice in both halves, right? Like, we've played some, played good. We just had, again, like the stretches where we're not good, got to be just slightly below average rather than really bad. You know what I mean? Like, that, those stretches, you're not going to play great all the time, but those stretches need to be a little bit more around average. Yeah. Think about subbing the tune back in at all a little bit earlier with them kind of fronting and being and you guys having trouble getting the ball because he goes kind of been your best post century passer all year. No. What did went wrong with uh, Tyrese for Tyrese in the second half? Um, just, just I thought he he. Um, had some great looks. I mean, obviously got nine threes up. Um, I didn't, and he didn't quite get to the rim as much as he has been. He did a bit, but had a couple roll off, right? Just, but that's okay. I mean, he was fighting, playing, and he's made every one of those this, this whole series, and he'll make them again. How much more did some of your other guys turn down some open shots? A um, couple times, of course. I think a couple times, like uh, especially early, I thought we had some some really wide open looks uh, early that we tried to make the next play, and you know my thoughts on that. Usually when you turn down a really good shot, you end up getting a worse one sometimes. you got to kind of take that first really good one, especially in the playoffs. How much more difficult does it make it when you're home and you're hoping for a level of home court advantage, but the road team has a significant amount of fans here that makes it seem like a different home game? How much more difficult does it make it? To Don't put much stock in that. right? I think, I think we can win here or win there or win anywhere. We just got to play better.
What made you Plus go, go with uh, D'Anthony or give, give him a shot uh, today? Been leaning towards it, right? Um, just wanted to get get a look at him and, and thought he could help. He's a pretty good rebounder for a guard. Um, I thought he did okay. I mean, pretty difficult circumstances. Like I keep saying, he hasn't played hardly at all in three or four months. But we just, again, need somebody there, you know, to spell spell our two guards, you know, Kyle and KO. And okay, I'm at a shot. Cam okay, made, made a couple good plays again. And Melt was the one tonight. Thanks, all right, thanks, everybody. It's just what we saw from your team with the effort. Team you know, a lot of fight. You know, we got down early, just kept battling. A uh, number of guys just stepped up like they've done all year. And so the defense I thought was really good, the rebounding really good, a lot of hustle in the game. You know, I thought Josh was unbelievable. I think OG gave us great minutes. You can't say enough of what, about what Jalen did. Uh, and then Precious came in and gave us great minutes, as did Deuce. And and that's really been the story of our season. Uh, and Dante had a good stretch where we you know, we need everyone just hustling like crazy. And if we do that, good things will come from that. Embiid obviously got Isaiah into foul trouble, and then you go to Precious, and then you obviously switch OG onto him as well. Just what did you see from the team to make up? Yeah, we just got to make sure we're disciplined. We can't whack down, you know. We and if we, if we do that and give the appropriate help and read the ball correctly and then fly around after that, then our, then our defense is good. You know, so that's what we have to do. And we got to be disciplined. End of the third quarter, so it was a lot. Yeah, you, just, you know, tweak something, but he's fine. You mentioned the final stretch of the fourth quarter. You kept it without a basket. What was the key defensively in keeping them from a field goal? Yeah, you know, it, it's just, and look, they, they're a, a, a very dynamic team, and so, they put a lot of pressure on you. They got a number of guys that could go off the dribble. And then you, you, when you factor in what Maxi does and what Embiid does, that's it's a, it's a lot of firepower. And you got to be tied together with your whole team because once you send the second guy, you also got to make the rotations. And then you got to finish. You got to challenge the shot. And then they're very athletic and going after the ball, too. So. Uh, we know that the, the challenge for us is to play. We have to play for 48 minutes against them. You mentioned, you mentioned playing for 48 minutes, Tom. You guys consistently are getting the loose balls at the end of games. You do it all year. You've done it multiple times in the series. What is it about your group that? Yeah, you, you know, and I that? think we learned it that throughout the course of the season because it started when Mitch went out and everyone thought you know we would be in trouble then. And then Isaiah went in there, and you know you're not replacing Mitch individually. You know you got to do that with your team. And then when uh, Julius went out, the same thing. You don't re replace him individually. And then OG goes out, and the same thing could be said for him. We had a great January, but then we lost everyone, so we didn't have a starting front court. Then when we got guys back, Isaiah missed a bunch of games, and he's on minutes restrictions the, the last couple of months. But what it did do is it allowed. Josh to grow more and Dante to grow more and Deuce to grow more. And so that was a positive. And then, you know, Jalen's just played at such an incredibly high level all season long. And, and we can play off that. And we have a little bit of everything. We got, you know, the rebounding has been terrific. Everyone questioned the rebounding with Josh at the power forward. We've been the best rebounding team all year. Everyone questioned Jalen, you know, being a leader. Then, you know, so. You know, we got a lot to prove, and we still, you know, it takes four to win a series, and that's what we got to focus on. When you have a guy like OG who can guard a 6'2 guy like Maxi or a 7-foot guy like MB, just how valuable is that to you? Yeah, and the same could be said for Josh, you know, and, and that's what gives you, you know, the, those are huge pluses. And uh, OG, uh, you know, like the, we knew that uh, today it was not only, like, he, he, he didn't, he wasn't, it, just as individual defense, it was the rebounding that went along with that. You know, and to me, that was huge for us. And then I thought Josh was everywhere, and he was the trigger. He was the trigger of the defense. And so, and then you, when you couple that with the 17 rebounds, that's you know he had great impact on the game, and that's what Josh does. And then I thought at the end, you know, like you got to fight for the ball, and I thought we did that. Would, yes. you say, would you say this game kind of is your season in a cap? I mean, the way you want it, doing things, Jalen having a big game, 
defense, you know, uh, offensive rebounds, guys like, you know, Precious stepping up when they had to. I mean, yeah, and I think that it has been the story of the season. And I think, yeah, you know, when you look back to everything that transpired with guys going out and then new guys coming in and whoever gets in there, just get the job done. You know, know what your job is, do your job, execute. And then, you know, there was disappointment in the way, we, you know, we, we finished the last game. But what we were in control of is how we got ready for this game. So, you know, be ready. And that's that's our challenge. And we know you're not replacing, you know, frontline guys individually. We have to do it collectively. And if we do that, you know, if we're a team we and we do the right things, good things come from that. You played a lot of great games, obviously. Playoffs, kind of a swing game in the playoffs. And he sets two Nick records with the whole time points and first 40 and 10 guy. I mean, what do you say about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, this has probably been, we're a team. And, it, it, you know, we have a, a team of leaders. And then, of course, the way Jalen has responded to the challenge has been huge. But not just Jalen, everyone's embraced their role. And, and, and like I said, the challenge now is for us not to feel good about ourselves to not change to you know enjoy this for the moment but tonight start getting ready for the next one so we, we know the challenge that'll be in front of us and we have to get the fourth win so be ready for that a couple more guys um with, with mitch was he there was a report that he was warming up with the intention of playing did something happen yeah just you know and and again it was he had to go through the warm-up and then make a decision as to whether he felt he could go or not, and he, he wasn't quite there. So, you know, just keep getting getting your treatment and get a look at it tomorrow, and then we go from there. So with OG, how, did you know, like, when you didn't have Mitch, did you know he could be an option? Yeah, well, going into the series, we, you know, we thought but this could be a possibility. You know, I thought more, like, we probably were going to use it more in a different situation. Right, but the situation we were in with Mitch being out, Isaiah in foul trouble, and then I wanted to get a look at it anyway, and he wanted to do it, so we got a look at it. And look, uh, Embiid is, you know, he's a loader. You're not guarding him individually. You got to guard him with your team. So we understand that. So rebounding at the end, the offensive rebounding, the way that you, it kept your your possessions going, it was key to to winning that game down the stretch. Wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And I think it's it's one of the things, it's one of the strengths of our team. So and we we know how important that is. We, we, we think it's a high value shot, right? So we're trying to, you know, obviously get as many rim attacks as we can get. We like layups, we like free throws, and we like open threes. And then a byproduct of forcing a defense to collapse, right, is getting the, 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 the offensive rebound. And what comes from that are – Layups, dunks, free throws, and open threes. So we no understand how important that is. So, and you know, we've got some guys that are that are great at it, and they they're relentless. I think when you look at Mitch, is probably the best in the league. Isaiah is great at it. Josh is great at it. OG's great at it. So even our smalls are 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 good at going. Tom, the, the last one, beginning, the beginning part of that game, OG. You're using him a little bit differently. He's kind of guarding Ubre or guarding off the ball as opposed to on on Maxi, and he's roaming a little bit. How 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 did you see him do in in that role, and how do you feel? Yeah, about him? and you know, like, and again, you're not. I don't think a steady diet of anything on anybody. So, we, and that's the value of having the versatility of Josh. And so, Josh and OG are are basically interchangeable. And then you throw in Dante, who's different, but also can guard. You know, wings, and then you throw in Deuce, who's you know he can, he can guard up, he can guard down. So we got a bunch of guys like that, and then the versatility of Precious, what he can do as well. So is is we've got a number of guys that fit into that category. Is guarding indeed late in the game and he's fronting him. How much of the goal is just like slow down their op their act their options and force them into well, their actions? The, you know, the front is is something that you but you you have to look at the placement of the ball. And then you have to have the discipline to do it correctly. And then you have to adjust when he steps out. And you, there's a different coverage for that. And then where he catches, there's different coverage for that. And then you you, you need everyone reading the ball correctly for it to work. Thanks, yep. Derek, you don't need to Derek.
Say that one more time. What do you think bogged you guys down in the fourth quarter? Uh, we just couldn't get like in the rhythm, like offensively, as far as like what we wanted to run a couple of times. Um, you know, we got to, that's on me and Kalo to get us organi organized and get us a good shot. Seems like the Knicks are pretty good at getting back after they initial, after they send that initial double team and scrambling back to their, to their original guys. That's something you noticed? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, they know when they're doubling, so I mean, that kind of helps as well. So it's like when Joel got the ball in the post, they doubled. Uh, when Brunson switched on me, they doubled. Like they know when they're going, and uh, that, that helps them with their rotations. Terry's growing into a leader yourself this season. What do you sort of message to the rest of the group going back up to New York in this situation? All right, yeah, I mean, the message you send is first to four. You know, they got three already, so, you know, we got to go up there and fight for our lives, fight for our season, and that's what it is. Terry, it seemed like you guys had gotten the offensive rebounding under control for games two and three. Not the case today. What was harder today about getting those boards. You know, what's crazy about that is uh, Nurse kept saying, you know, he's going to show them film from games one and two. Like, games three, like you said, games, he's going to show them film from game one. Sorry. Games two and three, we did a great job of just boxing out and grabbing every single rebound for the most part other than the, the end of game two. But uh, he said it. He kept saying it. He kept saying it before the game. Like, God, just know I promise you they're going to show them film of uh, – Tibbs are going to show them film of game one and say, listen, this is how we got to beat this team. We got to go in there. got to grab every single rebound. And for the most part, like, like first three quarters we did a decent job. It's just the fourth quarter they got, you know, some extra possession that cost us. Yeah, it was difficult. I mean, again, that's on like me and Kalo because they they trapped him almost every single time he caught the ball. So that's that's extremely hard. You know, it's hard to be aggressive when when you get trapped. He made the right plays for the most part. I think uh, guys missed shots. I missed a couple shots. I missed a couple layups that I normally make. Uh, we missed a couple threes, but uh, I feel like Joe did a great job of of reading the defense. You know, they came and trapped him. He kicked it out, and we got some shots that just didn't fall today. As the game goes on. You know, pressure's building and building. That's still the right play, passing it to the weak side, mm -hmm. getting it to the right guy. But how much does that weigh on you when you know big shot, big moment, big time? Somebody's got to make a shot to take the pressure off of Joel. Uh, I wouldn't say it weighs on me. I mean, it's just like, like for one time, I just he he has a one thing that Joel has done is he's built a lot of trust in us, which is you need that. He needs to do that, and he's really worked on that. I think the four years that I've been here, he's gotten a lot better at that. So it was a couple of plays where uh, he trusted me to make a big shot. Was, like he kicked one to me at the top of the key, and a shot that I normally make. You know, I, I feel like if I had it back, I'd probably make it now. But you know, I missed it. So. I think he can live with that. He can live with that being a good shot. And there was a couple of times where I think I drove in and kicked to somebody else for a three. You know, we can live with those shots. It just we missed them tonight or this afternoon. I felt like during the second quarter without Joel, Miles Murray did a really good job of trying to sort of deny you the ball and stay with you on screens. I guess what goes into that do you think to allow him sort of not get loose? Right. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit too. Um, try to be a little bit less predictable. I feel like uh, in those lineups throughout the year, I've done a good job of just kind of just controlling the game, controlling the pace, controlling, dictating uh, what we want to run. Um, and then, you know, sometimes they, when they switch, they, they do different things. They trap, they, they try to get the ball out of my hands. And I was just telling the campaign, we got to mix it up, like a variety of it, and uh, find different ways for not just, you know, the defense to be loaded up on myself or loaded up on him. Therese, did this feel like a home, a home game? Did it feel like a home? I mean, we we know that's coming. I mean, honestly, but uh, our crowd was that was great. We appreciate them every single time. Uh, I feel like this, it was the same same crowd as, as as last time. So I mean, our crowd did a great job though. You know, we appreciate them, and uh, it's it's a close, very very close um, two organizations. Like they're right up the street from us, honestly. So you know, it is what it is, and you just got to go out there and you got to defeat that. Every time that stretch where you guys turned it over, I think it was three consecutive possessions. One was an outlet that went too far. But in a game where, you know, it's 95-90, every possession is critical. Do you right. remember those turns and what? Right, right. Uh, 
One of them was, like you said, the outlet. One of them was when uh, me and Joel miscommunication. I was about to go back door, but he thought I was coming up for the handoff, so that's on both of us. And uh, it's funny that he just said that before I came over here. He was like, man, those those three, four possessions where he turned, uh, we turned the ball over, uh, you know, it came back to bite us. But, you know, we just moved on from it. I think we were still up, I think, 10. Um, I think DiVincenzo's threes, those two threes that he hit was huge. And um, McBride hit a three in the corner, so... It's all right, though. I mean, it is what it is. We live to see another day. We know what we got to do. Tyrese, you did a good job defensively on Jalen Brunson in games one and two as a team. You know, game three and four, he's kind of, for lack of a better term, rebounded offensively a bit. What goes into defending him game four to try and keep the series alive? Uh, like next game? Game five? In, I'm sorry, game no, five. No, no, yeah. I actually didn't know. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, it's tough because – we kind of let him play a lot of one-on-one -on -one or, or like uh, two on two. So we didn't like trap him a lot. You know, we kind of just let him play um, and try to like make, you know, the other guys try to slow them down. You know what I mean? So we did a really good job. Like finally, like Josh Hart missed a shot today. Like he's been making every single shot it felt like uh, the past three games. But um, I know it's it's tough. It's tough. We, me and Joe was literally just talking about it. like it's tough. Like we, you know, we're letting them play those, let them shoot those middies, letting them do that because that's the game plan. But um, I don't think – I think we played solid defense. You know, we got to be able to score the ball down the stretch. Tough, 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 tough spot now, 3-1, and two of, their home, two of their games are going to be in the garden, obviously. And just think about the challenge you have for this team, just how confident are you about being able to kind of turn this around and maybe and stay in the series and maybe, maybe win it? Right, yeah, extremely confident. It's a confident group over there, honestly, just because we've been through a lot this year, and we know that. So – when adversity hits, uh, we know how to bounce back from it. You know, I think we feel like that we're very capable of winning uh, three games in a row. I would say that uh, first and foremost. And we've been very, very, very close in, in a lot of these games. Um, you know, game two in this game for sure. Uh, it's like we should have won. So you know, we'll take that confidence over there and, and try to go win. You know, that's all we can do. You got to go try to go get one game first in the garden and come back here, get one game, and, and then we'll see what happens in game seven. So. Um, they got extremely physical. They 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 kind of changed their coverages, changed their coverages, changed their matchups. Um, and we just got stagnant. We got stagnant. We didn't know, like I said earlier, it was that's kind of I'll put that on me, me and K Lo. Um, we gotta know what to run. We gotta know how to get the big flow of the ball, even though we know they're gonna trap him. But it's it's still good. Like if they trap him now, he got two on the ball, and now we got a four and three on the back side, and we just gotta convert those plays. So from your team with the effort, team you won. know, a lot of fight. You know, we got down early, just kept battling. A uh, number of guys just stepped up like they've done all year. And so the defense, I thought, was really good. The rebounding, really good. A lot of hustle in the game. You know, I thought Josh was unbelievable. I think OG gave us great minutes. You can't say enough of what, about what Jalen did. Uh, and then Precious came in and gave us great minutes, as did Deuce. And, and that's really... Coach, you, you consider second chance points in your favor, the team favor, out rebounding in your team's favor, points in the paint as well, and, and good shooting. This is the most complete offensive performance your team had so far in this series. Was this the most complete offensive performance in terms of all those factors besides good shooting, but out rebounding, second chance points, and points in the paint? Uh, I think so, like as far as like timely scores. We didn't shoot the ball as well as we wanted to. Um, especially from three, but we made timely ones. And then just second chance possessions, just if a shot goes up, just trying to get off the glass, get another possession, you know, drain out more clock and get another good shot. So, yeah, we think it was a good performance, but we can do better. OG, defensively, can you talk about, like, you know, you were really called on to help out, or well, more than help out than Embiid, and how you guys approach that, and uh, just a little bit about that. Uh, I don't know. No, oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, just didn't beat. He's a great player, so just try to make the shots as uh, difficult as possible. Just make him as uh, uncomfortable as possible because he's a great player and he's going to score. 
So just try to find ways to, you know, make him less efficient. When you're fronting him on those plays late in the game, what, is the goal for you to just cut off the pass completely? Is it to just slow down the offense enough to where they can't get into their action early? It's like, both. Because um, I want them to try to throw the pass. I think I could steal it. And I think they know, too. That's why they don't throw it sometimes. And then also drain clock, catch the ball further out, and then make them go to the next option, you know. Just try to make it as difficult as possible, boggle up the offense, and take clock away. What's it like for you guys when Jalen gets cooking like that? And then uh, what does it do for you guys, especially after a loss when you're coming back to know that your leader is there and he steps up in a big moment? Uh, I don't know. Jalen's a great player. I guess you come to expect it. You expect him to make every shot. He's a great player. So even when he was called the first couple of games, you knew it was going to turn around just because we, we see him every day. It was going to turn around eventually. So just him staying aggressive and then us feeding off of him, being aggressive as well. You're a guy who obviously can guard just about anybody, any position. How much pride do you take in that part of your game? Uh, I've always taken a lot of pride in that. I mean, going on to a guy like me, I know you talked earlier about about that, but the challenge that he presents, I mean, just, just, just the, the, uh, the, the amount of height you're giving up to him, I mean, what's the specific challenge in being able to neutralize that? Uh, no specific challenge, really. Just fight as hard as I can. You know, he's a great player. Um, he's going to score. Um, he has ways to count on that stuff, too. He's seen everything, I'm sure. So he knows how to go against it, too. Um, so just doing the best I can, really. You had, you had 14 boards tonight. They, you were you, even beginning of the game. You, your assignment was a little different. You're like guarding Oubre and kind of being the low man there. Like, is, do you find that, that having to grab boards when you're the low man in that position as opposed to guarding Maxi is that kind of more important for that particular role? Oh, I mean, I always try to grab boards. Usually I'm outside on the perimeter or contesting shots, so I'm far away from the ball when the shot goes up. But if I'm there, I'll try to always rebound. I always try to help the team however way I can. When you're, when you're the low man, like especially in a Tibbs defense, you have to cover so much ground, and you have to do it really quickly. What, what is the way that you can master helping into the lane on a guy but still being able to scramble back out and recover? Just the you know, just if I'm going in the lane, telling the next man to go to the corner and take mine, and just talking it out, you know, directing from the back line. In the moment, like you guys have a play in that fourth quarter when Lowry gets the ball, you close out to Lowry, he swings it to Embiid, and Precious gets the block on Embiid, and you guys are just all recovering onto the shoes. Can you can you feel that in the moment, like how cohesive that is? Oh yeah, especially with Precious. We've been playing together. We used to do that uh, a lot on our past team, and then just knowing the shot clock too, knowing can't give up a Lowry three, make him make another decision, and then make an, and then the shot clock goes down. So just knowing the clock. And then knowing time and score and who has the ball. Oh, gee. You face Jalen when you've been on other teams. What's it like to guard a guy like that? He's kind of herky jerky and kind of clever about the way he gets to his spots. Uh, yeah, Jalen's a difficult player to guard. Um, he's a bunch of counters. He can make shots from anywhere. So just you try to make it as hard as possible and see what happens. It seems like it would be kind of frustrating because it doesn't seem like he's moving that fast, but he's kind of clever about the way he gets to his spots. And is yeah, he a little he, different than a lot of guys? Uh, yeah, he's pretty unique. I don't know anyone who's like him. He's pretty unique. That's what makes him special. But, yeah, it's just the mix of everything, the the off-speed, off-herky-jerky, uh, is unique. So that works in his favor for sure. Oh, gee, how your satisfaction level of this game? You, you led the team in, in minutes. You had a double double. You really had a great game. How, how satisfying is that for you? Um, it's it's cool, I guess. I mean, just it's fine. It's what it took to win today. Just try to go back, work we'll over film, prepare as a team to win the next one or try to win the next one. Thanks, OG. Oh, all, all three wins coming back from double digits. What what does it say about this team to just be able to battle through all of that? Oh, uh, we're just a resilient bunch. So we've been resilient the whole year. And no matter the score, we always think we're still in the game. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. All right. John, you guys, after all the things that happened in game three to come back the way you guys did, the fight just as a whole team, um, playing shorthanded to, to pull this out, what, what do you make of this? I don't know. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I give them a lot of credit first and foremost. Um, and they 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 play hard. They play they play so well together. Um, even when things are look chaotic, uh, they're in control. So um, it's a credit to them and credit to Nick. And um, somehow we just found a way. We kept fighting, we kept sticking together. We found a way. And um, when it's ugly and uh, we can find a way to win like that, you now when we're not playing perfect, it's um, it's a it's a plus for us and plus for our confidence. But um, I mean we're not done yet. We got to continue to have that humble mentality and um, we got to find a way to win another. It, um, setting the um, franchise record for playoff points. I mean, is that something you can bask in yet, or is that one of those things where it's like I'll look back at that when I retire? I look back when I retire. Seriously, this is it's great right now. It helped us uh, get a win, but um, it's not gonna do anything for us going forward. Jalen, after game two, you said even you don't care if you had a bad night as long as the team got the W, but now you go out and set that record and get the win. Do you, I guess, kind of a piggyback on that, but, you know, do you get to celebrate anymore having the great game you had and the win? No, no, no. You, you, you're happy you uh, got a win, and and you can look forward to see how can we be better and get a, get another one. And so, um, yeah, it's cool, and I'm um, thankful. And um, just to be, you know, had the opportunity and do all that stuff. But um, there's there's no extra to that. It's just we win, we we move on, and we we figure out how can we be better. What have the last couple of days been like for you after you guys lost Thursday night, and how did you get your mind ready and right for today? I'm sorry, you guys say it again. I'm sorry. Um, what was what have been the last uh, couple of days for you? What have they been like since you guys lost on Thursday, and how have you um, gotten your mind right and gotten ready for this game today? I um, what did I do? A uh, dinner with family. Um, found a way to just relax and um, breathe, not really uh, worry about what's going on on the outside, and um, just kept my mind right. You like you banged knees at the end of third quarter with Lowry. Yeah, but I'm, I'm all good. I'm all good. Like you were kind of reluctant to go to, to the locker room. Is that pretty accurate from where we were sitting anyway? It looked like you were yeah, wanting did. to talk yourself into staying on the bench. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't want to, but went back there, um, walked around for a couple of seconds, and came back up. Yeah, we, we've seen OG and Precious throughout the regular season since they got here kind of have that communication on defense, but for them to show up the way they did today, just what did you see that allowed them to be successful guarding Embiid in the fourth quarter? Yeah, um, they did a great job. Um, obviously having them in the point of attack and then um, us just being ready to help them out. You know, obviously Embiid's a, a handful. And so um, just for us to go out there and uh, sit together, especially during crunch time like that, it's, um, it's a pretty remarkable feat considering what him and the rest of the team were capable to do. So, um, But uh, we got to figure out how can we be better. And uh, I'm going to continue to say it. We got to be better if uh, we want to close out and um, move on to the next round because this team's not going to quit fighting. With the beat and drop, what are you evaluating whether to kind of explore that mid range or take it all the way into the paint? Um, I'm exploring a lot. <laughs> I'm exploring a lot. I see a lot and uh, just reading what happens, what he does, and going to figure something out while I'm in there. Does it feel like you versus him at all in those pick and roll moments? Um, I mean, they're, they're doing a great job of pursuing. And so um, I can't just be, uh, can't forget about the guy who's guarding the screen. Now, usually I do, but they've done a great job all series just pursuing the ball. And so um, while I can think that, I'm just figuring out where can I be effective and how can I keep myself on balance, keep them off balance. Isaiah said that after the first two games, there's a big emphasis on trying to figure out how to get you clear of that first defender a little bit more, like create more space for you. And um, I'm just wondering, like, what's it been like kind of being in problem-solving mode, like with Isaiah and the other bigs, trying to, like, get that pick-and-roll game down? Yeah, um, constant communication, uh, making sure we're always on the same page. And uh, the bigs, they've been doing a great job of you know, doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, it's on me to create space. It's on me to come off with speed. It's... Um, I can't ask them to hold the screen, set the screen, and that's when it gets tricky where the ref might call offense or moving screen or whatever. But um, 
I had to just set my man up, make sure he hits the screen, create space, and then attack from there. Yeah, I, know, um, I, I know you said obviously the team win and getting better going forward are the most important things to you, but were, were you aware you had passed Bernard King until after the game, or did you know anything about that? Didn't know anything about it, not at all. That's a pretty big guy in Knicks history, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But um, unless he comes back and helps us win next game, uh, <laughs> I, I promise you, I, it's just I'll think about it later. Before, but Josh said, you know, playing five fouls, seventeen rebounds, two blocks in the fourth quarter, just kind of the effort. I mean, no matter what is going on with him, um, shooting the ball wise, his effort is always going to be there, and so. Um, that's the one thing that we all expect and all know that we're going to see every single night. So it's a credit to him for affecting the game when offense, is, offense isn't really working. And then um, we always got his back no matter what. Is there, there so many Knicks times, fans? There, there are a number of times in the fourth quarter with the way you guys were guarding Sorry. Embiid with OG on him. At times you would send a second guy to the ball. Like You're putting yourself defensively in situations where you know you're going to have to scramble. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those times you guys just recover really quick, went straight to the right guy really quick. Yeah. How confident are you guys as a team that, like, you know what, we get put in rotation, it doesn't matter, we'll, we're going to figure it out? Um, obviously, uh, Embiid is um, Embiid, so he demands uh, attention no matter where, he's, where he is on the floor, whether he has the ball or not, and so um, obviously with the ball, now we're going to have to put ourselves in positions where we can help out and also get back, and so... Um, we just know that we got to go out there and fly around and um, just find a way. And so uh, it's never going to be perfect. Obviously, things are going to happen. But um, no, as long as we're sticking together and making sure that we're, we're doing the right things, even if the result may not be what we want. And, um, but we just got to be on the same page. Was surprising at all to you that uh, there was such a loud Knicks fan presence these last two games, especially today when you were at the line a couple of times? You said, was it surprising that there was a loud Knicks? To you, I mean, this, this is supposed to be the belly of the beast, and yet somehow... There was a lot of MVP chance for you. Not gonna lie, this Philadelphia fan base is. Um, I said this before, but they're they're very relentless and so very passionate. Um, I mean, I'm an Eagles fan, I would know, but um, seeing the Knicks here and hearing the Knicks here was was pretty cool, and it's it's awesome. Say, what, does, what, does, what does that say about the Knicks fan base when you're hearing MVP chance at the free throw? Um, it means that they're for real. They're for real, and no matter where we are, they're going to be there. And so I'm, I'm appreciative, uh, I'm thankful, and um, a lot of these situations wouldn't be done without them.